Hi, this is Joe Eikens here with Imaginate Technologies. We're here to talk a little bit about the switchback feature available inside Revit 2012 and Navis 2012. Now, first things first, when you want to get the switchback feature to work, on our add-ins ribbon under it, external tools, inside Revit, we actually need to run this Navisworks switchback command. Now, it doesn't actually do anything. It just loads up some different modules to allow the switchback feature to work between Navis and Revit. Once that's done, we can go ahead and export the file to Navisworks 2012, typically as an NWC file. When we look at some different types of settings through here, and it'll take a moment to load up, there are a couple of options that you may want to consider enabling out of the away from the default settings. In particular, there's an option here to convert construction parts. If you've gone through the process of converting any of your objects into parts, this might be a nice feature to enable. Um, I'll go ahead and also convert element properties, but I'm not going to convert linked files. If I convert linked files, some of the things we're looking to do for the switchback features won't quite work the way you had intended. So what we'll need to do is instead export each different Revit file, each different link, independently. So I'll enable those features, but before I export it, I had turned on that feature to enable exporting of construction parts. I'm going to just take this basic exterior wall in CMU, click my button here to create parts from the ribbon, and just as simple as that, we've got individual parts for each different layer of construction for this particular wall that we'd then be able to uh, organize and simulate construction timelines within Navis. Now once that's done, again I'll go back to export to Navis 2012, and it's always a good idea to revalidate any settings that you have as you're getting used to things and getting into the, the swing of it all. In my particular case, because I hit cancel, I just want to come back here and make sure that, yeah, truly convert construction parts checkbox was filled in. Now, conversely, if you do not have any construction parts, you do not want to have that checkbox filled in. It'll tell you that it's it could not find the appropriate geometry for exporting and basically give you an error message. So as it is, I'll export this simply to project1.nwc. I'll overwrite that existing one, and it writes out that file. I'm going to close out of here, and I've got a second drawing, second file open right here. I've got two desks. They're actually at two different levels of the building, level one and level two. And on my insert ribbon, I'll choose to link in project one. Link it in origin to origin, click OK, and magically, as I bring this in, it intersects those two desks, and that's on purpose, so we can do a little bit of a collision detection later on. We're not doing it in a terribly complex file, but we're getting something in here that we can go ahead and look at. From here, I'll go ahead and save this particular project and export it to a Navisworks file. Go to Navisworks 2012, go to my Navisworks settings, and then inside the settings here, because I do not have any construction parts, I'm going to go ahead and disable that particular feature say OK, and save this out as Project 2. Pretty simple so far. I'm going to switch over to Navisworks now. Inside Navisworks, I'll go ahead and append project1.nwc, and as we look at this, we'll be able to see that, yes, indeed, I do have the individual parts in here that we can control independently. And once this is set up, I will go ahead and also append Project 2 which would be the two independent desks. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. When we are exporting to Navis, you typically will want to export from a three-dimensional view to ensure that all the 3D geometry comes through as opposed to some 3D and some plan geometry, clipped items, all sorts of different pieces. But export from a 3D view that has everything turned on. Now from here, if I want to go ahead and try and run the the detection or the switchback, I can select an independent object, right click, and choose switchback from a right click menu. We can also do this from the clash detective. But there's one key thing I want to point out in here. As we're looking at this, my current selection resolution is set to last object. And that's actually going to cause us a little bit of an issue from the Revit side of things. If I have that one item selected and I click on my switchback, uh, what we don't see, it's a little bit off the recording screen here, is down at the bottom of my screen, the Revit icon is blinking. I click on that, it says no good view could be found. Which is kind of odd, because I can see that desk right here. What do you mean no good view could be found? Well, back into Navis, 
on this object, I'm going to change my selection resolution instead of last object to first object. Once that has been said, I'll right click on this again, enable my switchback command. The Revit icon is blinking, I switch to the Revit app, and here I am zoomed in and ready to look at that particular floor, that particular item. If I switch to level 1, where I don't see the desk from level 2, and I'll close all hidden views so I don't have anything else open, once again switch back to Navis, pick my other desk, right click, uh, right click on the desk, go to switch back, and inside Revit it will give us our typical, hey there's no good views, should I go continue looking through here? Of course we'll say yes, go for it. There's a a piece that would be nice if it did something better for us here. In a typical Revit, when you're searching through different views, it'll say, is this a good view? And you'll have a you know an option to keep on cycling through different views. As it is here, it's not switching to any elevation or 3D or other views. Here's the first other good view that I found. So there's maybe a little bit of improvement that can still be made in this particular command. But there I am, zoomed into the desk on the second level. Now conversely, if I go back to Navis, uh, I can select my wall, right click and go to a switch back here. Now this is grabbing the overall wall. The other thing I'll do just to have some fun with this is in our clash detective, I'm going to go ahead and say from level one, let's check for collisions between that exterior brick wall and over here my, my two desks. Go ahead and start the collision what do you know it finds a bunch of different collisions now why does it find so many well in this case if you remember this wall was broken into multiple parts so it found collisions between all of the individual parts of the wall and all the desks not to mention that but if we look at each individual desk a desk is made of some different composite parts as well so we've got multiple collisions found between what is kind of this three different entities because of the way all of them get broken down. Now if I select the composite part and go to our results tab and try for this switchback, you know, we're grabbing this solid option. When we go to switchback and click in Revit it'll tell us same as what we had before, no good view could be found. Instead, back into Navis, I'm going to go to my Clash Detective and I'm not going to select the solid not the low level 60 by 30 but the top level, the first object 60 by 30 desk. With that item selected I can click on switch back and inside Revit it brings us to the desk. Inside Navis once more if I go back to my clash detection tree and I select my wall, again the top level item, the exterior brick on CMU wall, click on switch back, inside Revit we'll get some of our typical other dialogues saying hey that file is in, this wall is in a different file. Do you want to open it? And if so, it'll unload it from this drawing. That's fine. We'll click yes. And inside here, it opens up that other drawing with the other wall, and it's showing me all the different types of views in which I can find this overall wall. Now, the reason it switched to plan view instead of just highlighting it there in, in the 3D is in my plan view, I've got the regular wall available to me. Um, I don't have all of the individual parts. If I go to my 3D view, by default it's just showing me all the individual parts. And I said find me the collision between the overall wall and the desks, not an individual part of the wall. Hopefully you found this to be pretty useful. Thanks.